Well, hello, people. This is going to be the first of many podcasts for this channel. I don't have a name for it yet, and hopefully this won't be Dan's only time on. This is my friend. We used to call him Lieutenant Dan. Then he got a promotion, so he was Captain Dan. And then I don't know what his rank is now, but this is Daniel Coffin. Did I say your name right? I should, we've only typed it. I've never said it before. Yeah, yeah, Daniel Coffee, Coffee with an N. Uh, no longer in military service. So, oh, well, at least that's what he has to, to tell talk, us. To talk well, about he might that. be a Black Ops PMC that we would never know unless it was the yeah. last second of our life. But uh, this is Mr. John Jewett's training partner. And uh, are you currently a client or former client of his? Uh, no, I'm, I'm a client of his. And, I, and to be fair, I only train with him one day a week. And it was more like he invited me to train one time and then I just kept showing up. Um, so I don't know if he would call me his training partner, uh, but I certainly train. We train chess together once a week. Yeah. Well, I, what else? You got you get to train with the man, John Jewett himself. Yeah, and, um, there's a good video of him, Luke and John doing shoulders. And um, I think if nothing else, that sh video demonstrates how well you know what a scapular plane is so with i basically the reason why i have dan on tonight is because we're going to go through and critique or he's going to critique and i'm going to learn the posing of the mr the mr arnold the arnold classic top three because i've got this great video from desktop bodybuilding um the savior wills shout out to him i didn't get his permission to use this so hopefully he doesn't mind but um, he synced up the timing just right and scaled their heights just right for perfect 8K definition comparison. And in my opinion, the way my brain works, where I am a visual spatial guy, despite all the trend I used, and the way I can convert anatomical terminology into a three-dimensional model in my head, and then I know what I'm supposed to do with posing, for me and my learning style, Dan is this new breath of fresh air. Whereas up until him, it was kind of like, turn it out, do this, do this. And it's a bunch of layman's terms. And I don't know what the fuck they're talking about when they're trying to pose you. So unless they physically come over and touch you and move you, you don't know how to assume that position. And I believe Dan had a very good point about that. I'm going to summarize and you can go into more detail, but you're not going to have somebody on stage to force you into the position with their hands, you have to be able to recite the cues. And I used to tell people it's like, not that I know how to fly a plane or a chopper, Dan probably does, but I assume it's like a cockpit. You flip this switch, flip this switch, flip this ship, flip, check this gauge, check this, check that. It's like you have this checklist you go through of your body from the floor up and you just animate and you basically turn from a pile of shit into this statue just like a transformer turns from a chevy into a robot with cannons so without further ado i'm gonna let dan talk because i've been talking too long dan tell us about you yeah well uh thanks for having me on uh, i've never actually been on a podcast before i attempted to make my own podcast you're um, a virgin i just popped your podcast cherry yeah yeah <laughs> I, I attempted my own but then i was going to get expelled from school so i had to shut it down um but uh yeah i'm a physical therapy student currently. Um, I've competed a handful of times. I call myself the world's okayest bodybuilder. Um, that's that's what uh, I've deemed myself. Um, but yeah, bodybuilding has always just been a, a large part of my life. And um, so has physical therapy the last few years uh, since I've been in school. And what I realized um, after I prepped for the universe this last year was that it was exactly what Dr. Todd said is, um, there's a lot of people who are very educated and very skilled and knowledgeable about posing, but when it comes to their ability to articulate what it is that they want you to do, it's very challenging for them because their vocabulary is limited. Their language doesn't allow them access to terms um, that, that can be replicated much easier. Um, for example, if I were to say, <clears throat> uh, Dr. Todd, stick your arm out to the side. What does that mean to you? Okay, so that's well, what- I, ab I abducted my humorous, but I just- yeah, so, right? so but, That's what that means to him, is right. stick your arm out to the side. 
right to 90 degrees straight out like that. Right. Right. Um, but what that actually is, yeah, it's shoulder abduction to a 90 degree angle. So when I tell someone who's in a front double bicep, Hey, I want you to increase degree of shoulder abduction from 90 degrees to 110 degrees. Yeah. It's, it's easier than just saying, all right, lift it up, lift up your elbow a little bit. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. A little bit more, a little bit more until it gets into the right position. And what's funny is I say that all the time when I'm getting a massage from a massage therapist, I'm like, the, the knot is me, superior medial by two centimeters. And they don't know what I'm saying. It's like, you went to school for this and I'm using your school's language to communicate with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's kind of like at Starbucks when I walk in and uh, I say, give me a large coffee. And the guy behind the counter goes, oh, you mean venti? And I go, no, I know. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You're the one making up words, not me. You know exactly what I'm talking about. What Sorry. I go and I, I would go into a Starbucks and I would say, I will have the vente. And they're like, why don't you just say 20 ounce? And it's like, motherfucker, this is what you want me to do. I'm, it's like, are, you must be someone's wife. Like, there's no way that this could be this difficult unless you're making it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that, so that I saw that, I saw that gap that we had um, in the industry. And so I simply just started asking people if they wanted help with posing. And it started off with two guys, a uh, guy named Christian, a guy named Josh. Um, and I posed them for free for each of them for like 12 weeks, just like once a week, maybe twice a week over FaceTime. And what I would start doing is I'd have them run through the poses and I'd take screenshots and then I would give them some adjustments to make. They would make them. I would take another screenshot and then I'd match those things up side by side. I'd send that photo to them and we would talk about it together. We'd start from the floor. And we we go up every single joint until we got to the head and we talk about everything that's going on. And I'd say, okay, see what's happening here, see what's happening here. And it was a very collaborative event because they, my whole goal, whenever I try to teach someone how to pose is I want them to be able to teach what I taught, what I taught them to someone else. Like, I'm not trying to keep any secrets. Like I, I have none. If, if you wanted to just learn how to pose, just go to my Instagram page and watch all the videos. You would never need to hire me. Cause it's all there. And that's, um, I think it's something that's lost, right? It's, it's just information. Just, you can have it. You have access to it. Uh, it's like it met Matt Damon in, uh, in uh, what's the Goodwill movie? Hunting? Yeah. Goodwill hunting where uh, he like <clears throat> is way smarter than the dude at the bar. That's uh, the boyfriend of the girl he's hitting on. How do you like and, them apples? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and he, they're like, how do you know this? And he's like, I just went to the library. I just read the books. <laughs> I know. Like I, I'm not cheating. Like it's I just read the same books that they're that they're making you read at Harvard. I just didn't go to Harvard. Um, and so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm like. I'm not a pro. I'm not like a high level amateur even. Uh, so what authority do I have to do this? None other than I just read the stuff and I applied it and it makes sense and people have been successful. Well, I mean, on that same logic, I mean, what is the authority does Kenny Wallach have? I mean, there's you, there's Kenny Wallach. And now this isn't to say that Kenny Wallach does a bad job, but the individuals I've met who have learned from Kenny Wallach, when I went to fix their posing, there was a lot of holes and I'm not a great poser. And when I tried to give them direction, they didn't have the anatomical terms like externally rotate your humerus, you know, anterior tilt your pelvis. Yeah. What do you call it? um like protract your scapula externally yep. rotate your humerus like they don't know that stuff so it's like how does he coach you through the video if you don't know anatomical terms and i think it's called prepositions mm -hmm. and like that would go along with those and that and the, the body parts and the degrees and the directions and how to actually orient <laughs> yourself in space yeah. And, you know, I've actually, I've never met Kenny, uh, but I've heard he's a, you know, a, a great posing coach and a, a good person to work with. Uh, I would like to meet him at some point, maybe do some, some collaborative work with him. But um, yeah, you know, I think a lot of people who, who may be watching this right now may be one of those people that just doesn't have experience 
uh, when it comes to like anatomical terms. And so like, like if you ask my mom, like where her humorous is, like she might be able to get it eventually, but I don't think, I think like a couple of bones would run through her, her mind before she knew that it was this one. Um, and so I think, I think anatomical terms, prepositional terms, I think those things can be intimidating. And so for a coach, we try to not be intimidating because we want to be inviting. And so we tend to stray away from those things and use like, we almost insult people's intelligence by using these terms that are so elementary that it's like, like they think they're dumb for not understanding them, but they're not. They're just like, it's almost not even at a high enough level for them to comprehend. You got to teach them the language to communicate with them. Yeah. And, and mo most people have a pretty, pretty, like, you'd be surprised how many people know what abduction is. And, and, and then they're surprised that they know. It's, right. Like, and so, oh, yeah. I guess yeah, I this is that. the case with personal training is like, okay, you got to retract your scapula. You got to depress your scapula. And then we want to, you know, like I'll say stuff like that and they don't know what that means. And I'll say, it's your shoulder blade. And yeah. like, and I'll, you know, like we're going to make your shoulder blade go lower depression and we're going to retract it, bring it together towards the midline medially. Then we're going to protract. It means you push it forward and it goes laterally and superiorly. And then they learn it. And then we proceed like, rather than just, I'm not going to show you what numbers are. It's kind of like the Gnostic belief. Okay. So it used to be like a thousand years ago, maybe more that the priests wouldn't teach the people Latin or Greek. So they can't read the Bible that they have to be read to. And then the, now the, the preacher has control over the message he communicates to the people in their layman's terms the lay people, that's where it comes from, is the lay people don't know what the Bible actually says because they don't read Latin. I don't believe in that. I believe let's teach them Latin, let them read the Bible and know and figure out for themselves what they agree with and what they don't. Rather than yeah. trying to control the information, let's let's share the language. So I, I mean, to me, the optimal thing is if you're doing bodybuilding and you are lifting weights to grow your body, you should know what the parts of your body are called. And therefore you should, if you know how to train your body, you should know you're training for the purpose of displaying it. So posing should be something that's integrally developed just like training. Because for instance, Kai Green says a front double bicep, a rear double bicep is a lot like a face pull. And then the way that you do a seated cable pull close is how you wind up for rear lat spread. So yes. he would have posing training that was different from hypertrophy training. Mm. Yeah, not not a bad uh, a bad idea there. I haven't quite bought in on the uh, on like training specific muscle groups to be able to like elevate certain poses. I haven't I haven't quite had enough uh, experience or practice with that. Um, but I do know that there are some people who who design their training for that exact reason. And it is something that's interesting. Um, I think another gap that is within the industry when it comes to posing is the in-person versus virtual. Mm -hmm. So we have easily accepted virtual training, right? Like online training, like that, that's been accepted for years now. Whereas a long time ago, personal training was only done in person. It's the name of it, right? And you needed all these certifications and stuff like that. But what's lagged behind is it's the posing. If you ask anyone over like, it has to be like over 30, maybe 35, anyone, anyone in that age demographic that contacts me, the first question they ask is where are you located? To which I say, it doesn't matter. Right. Like I can reach you anywhere. I have, I have multiple clients in uh, like Thailand and uh, Mol Moldova, you know, I've posed guys over there, Portugal, uh, but they want to know where I'm located because they think the only way to learn posing is in person. Just like how, you know, 30 years ago, personal training was only done in person. I used to have a hard time with it. I did a remote posing and it started in 2020, 2019. And it was some of the most efficient posing I've ever learned. 
that I worked with on uh, Quentin and um, his, his uh, Instagram handle is dread. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now. The one an asshole of me, but the point is, is um, he uh, was a very good poser, very good at routines, yeah. especially. And I was like, I want to learn how to move like that. But we never got past after two years of posing. I never got good enough at the mandatories to actually get really good at routines. But the point was, is that I, he made me look so good that some of the best pictures ever taken to me were from posing practice, not from being on stage. Cause he was able to say, turn this way, turn that way and really get it out of me without having to physically push me into position. Plus, you know, I live in Michigan. We have a Ken Jackson is about 45 minutes from me. And when I turned pro, there was it. I was me and Ken Jackson were the only active pro bodybuilders that Joe Russo is a classic physique pro who live, trains at the same gym as me. Actually, he trains clients at the gym I train at. He trains at Novi Powerhouse. I train at Springfield. And then after, which was kind of reverse order, Dominic Trivellini turned pro and so did Jordan Janowitz. But I don't know where Dominic even lives right now. He might live in Florida. And um, Jordan, I think he lives like two hours north of me now. So the point is, is that we don't have a lot of pros to sit around and teach each other how to pose in the modern style. And then when I saw, you know, I, I've known you for years. I've known you for four years, I think. And um, uh, five, I think. Five Since, years. Uh, yeah. Five years. 17, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe six. Yeah. It was January, January of 2018, I thought. Oh, OK. That, yeah, could... that was. Yeah. Because you saw the um, Anabolic University video 13 where I yeah. with a cycle that had something to do with alternating trend and IGF-1 LR3. So that <laughs> you used the LR3 as a bridge between the trend spurts of trend acetate for three weeks at a time. And it was a cool idea and it works on paper. I'm sure it works for some people. But yeah, that's how you reached out to me was after that video. I do uh, remember that. Yeah. Yeah, it was January 17th, I think, of 2018. But um, either way, what was I going to say? That um, a lot of pros in the area. I saw yeah. your TikTok. Oh. It wasn't TikToks. They were TikToks that got converted to Instagram reels, I think. But nonetheless, you were giving really clear, concise 60-second videos on how to fix posing and explaining stuff and using some of that like I do. You, I've never really felt right about firing my quads in the front pose. So I've been competing for 15 years. I'm a pro. And uh, my front pose has never looked so good. My front pose, my front bicep, my front lat spread. That's three poses right there. Right. And, and then ab and thigh. And then muscular. also your um, most muscular. So that's four of my eight poses. Half my body has improved from one of your reels, which was basically yeah. stick my butt back as far as I can, doing basically pelvic antiversion, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, and put, and that uh, sets me up to push my quads against the floor. And then I transferred that over to my Smith squats, to my standing calf raises, to my belt squats, to, and I've seen quad involvement the whole way up, much yeah. better quad involvement. So now it's, um synergistic the quad shape is improving and the, the quad sweep from the pose is improved but doing the pose while i lift treating all my quad closed chain movements as a preparation for that pose has now facilitated the muscles improving for that pose now you'll never be able to forget it <laughs> and so that's like if i it could benefit so much and if big rami watched your video critiquing his posing he might have be why he looks so good at the Arnold because he fixed his scapular <laughs> retraction. Somebody showed, him, somebody showed him my reel. <laughs> I hope so. Because you were polite and you were respectful, but you basically missed nothing. Whereas everyone else talks shit, you basically like, this is how we fix it. So unless you have something to add, I figure we could get to your, we can see your expertise in motion as I uh, pull yeah. up this video I have prepped. Let's see. I have I haven't seen the video, so this will be uh, interesting for me. All right. Now how do I do this? I'm my own producer, and I'm dumb and old. Screen share is probably that green button. There. Do you see the screen? I do. 
All I right. Got it. Hopefully we've got Nick, Nick Walker, okay. Samson, and Andrew Jacked. I'm going to use the names that I know them as, and we can discuss. We'll do it pose by pose, and let's just let it rip. In this video, we're okay. going to talk to Ray from the 20. All right, I think they're in their poses. <laughs> yeah, good enough. Um, okay, so when I when I look see master yeah, so when I look at any pose, um, I usually look. You know, like I know we're playing a video, so we won't probably be able to do this. But I look. I start off looking at the setup. Like, what are they doing with their bodies to get in position? Um, because as you see, all these guys already have their arms up, and so I'm a proponent of before you do anything with your upper body your feet and your whole lower half like needs to be set in place. We don't move the upper body until the lower body is completely set. And in that moment, like, what are you doing with your upper body? You're, you know, you're crossed in front, you're blocking your midsection, whatever. So once you get into a pose, the first thing I look at is I look at the feet, right? And especially in front shots, I'm always looking to make sure that the arch of the foot is like, is nice and high. Right. I want to make sure that those arches um, are visible because what that is doing is it's creating like a little bit of a tripod effect with your foot. And I have there's like three pressure points. There's the big toe. There's uh, like base of the like fifth metatarsal and then the heel. So like three pressure points that you can really root down through the floor in and get that arch nice and high. That's going to provide you stability. And when you have stability, you can elicit a greater strength response. Right. That's kind of the prerequisite to like having maximum force output is being in a stable position. Uh, it's like firing a cannon from the ground versus firing a cannon off a ship. Right. Like the Ooh. ship, the damn thing's moving around. Yeah. Uh, so you want to fire that cannon from, you know, from ground level. So looking at the arc to generate that arc before we move on to yeah. generate that arc, we want to do lateral pressure and external rotation of the hip. Is that right? Tear the floor apart. Yeah. So uh, that's like the second thing I usually oh. tell people, but, okay. but yeah, to get that arch, I say uh, the layman's term is what I tell people is put all of your weight on the pinky toe sides of your feet. Okay. Oh, but, but keep your big toe down on the ground. So it's almost like, almost like you're about to roll an ankle or something like that. Right. Then the set, then the second thing I do tell them is if you were straddling a crack in the ground, and your feet were on either side of it. I want you to rip that crack apart, like pull it away, mm -hmm. pull the flooring away from each other. And what that is, is what you just referenced is that's the external rotation of the hip, right? Doing that with this is my foot and I'm trying to rip the ground apart up here at my hip, my it's externally rotating. Mm -hmm. And that external rotation of the hip through a closed chain, right? Foot on the floor, that's your closed chain. Foot off the floor, that's an open chain. Um, what that does, that just lights up the quads like crazy. Um, and as you, got, as you can see, like these guys are very much doing that. The next thing is going to be the position of the hips. And the thing that you talked about earlier about pushing your butt back, um, that that is that's one of the cues that I, I do use is I, I say push the push the hips back um, like you're sticking your butt out for the simple reason of like things appear larger the closer they are to you and they appear smaller the further they are away and when that's the case uh, like in bodybuilding you want to make sure those hips are really small. So you want to make sure those hips are as far away from the judges as possible. And so all these guys are, are doing all of these things. Obviously, they're elite pros. Now, when I look at the quads, Nick and Samson are hitting theirs straight on. Equal weight in each of the feet, each of the legs, right? Like 50-50. Andrew Jack over here, he has a leg that has much more weight on it. As you can see, it's going to be his right, your left. He's putting all his weight on that leg and then he's just spiking uh this left leg right here to, and you can see the difference in what's going on because that right leg looks super dense right but it does not a ton of striations that left leg which which it's spiked and he's still externally rotating the hip you'll see all these striations it's a different way to show off different types of muscle um and different levels of conditioning so that's what's happening here. Um, I would say, I mean, all these guys are, are doing 
excellent pose when it comes to the lower body. Nick and Samson's hips are, are straight back. And then Andrew's hips are back and to his right over the top of his right hip. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just, that's what you do when you, when you hit a hip shift. Now, can you see this cursor? Yes. All right. So basically this is back. This has to be forward. This Correct. knee is bent. His pressures through his toe. Is it also through the lateral aspect of his foot or is it just on his toe, not his toe, heel and pinky fifth metatarsal? Yeah. So everything remains the same. You're still trying to, you're still trying to use that, that, tr that tripod. Let me back that up. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. You're still trying to use that like tripod thing that I talked about earlier. The only difference is you're losing one of the legs of it. So your heel isn't on the ground. But so it's just, you know, your big toe, fifth metatarsal, and you're still trying to externally rotate through that hip. Um, so everything would like the motions are still the same. You're still trying to rip the floor apart. You just have less surface area because the heel is elevated off the ground. Okay. Now, um, I guess the other thing, of course, is because he's cocked his hips, he's angling his abdomen. Are you ready for that? Or were you going to say some other stuff before we got that? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the next point. And any time that you're going to do a, a hip shift or a torso twist, that's what I call these. Some people call them hip dips. Um, I don't just don't care for that terminology. But what he's doing, and he's trying to line up his belly button with his knee of his right leg. He's, he's trying, trying to line, keep, line up his belly button with his what? With his knee with his right knee yeah so he's like trying to get a straight line there it's he's that would be an over exaggeration if he was doing that but he's like he would have to turn his chest the other way too so what you're really trying to do is you're just trying to he's trying to get that belly button as far over to that right hip as he can and that would that's causing him to rotate and then what he's doing is he's keeping this like lower thoracic spine in that rotated position and then he's turning his chest toward the judges and so that gives him this kind of like um transverse plane movement where two things are moving opposite directions and that's what shrinks the waist so in other words from a bird's eye view in the transverse plane his right hip is move and is rotating in a clockwise fashion but his elbows are rotating in a counterclockwise fashion so that they line back up with the frontal plane. Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, so it's just too, like like a salt shaker, like the grinder, <laughs> like it's just like, it's what you're doing. Um, and then Nick and Samson, these, these guys are hitting it straight on and their hips are straight back. So there's not a lot to talk about there. One thing I've noticed with applying that technique with a vacuum is that if you would normally have a straight line down or even a convexity, to the in um lower uh oblique yeah by having your hips back and doing the vacuum you get concavity here yeah and it tapers it is. better because i know that nick is actually convex in the abdomen when he's at rest but he looks pretty much a slight taper here yeah you see that his line is lining up with that arnold silhouette line that they get yeah. a steeper angle of the lat and then that angle of the lat seems to converge right through and be represented by the rectus femoris right here. Mm -hmm. It's where the lat line seems to line up pretty well with the rectus femoris line. I call and that the ob oblique sling. The oblique sling. And then right here, yeah. we don't have convexity here to the abs. We've got basically a straight up and down or even a tapering here. I and I notice over at Andrew, He's changed the angle of his obliques to the equal amount of his lat to make one continuous line that goes all the way through, but it no longer matches this. It now matches, it's parallel with the line of his hamstring. Yeah. And then we, over here, it seems like the vastus lateralis, out, outer side of the vastus lateralis, mirrors exactly this lat. The lat. So we've got two yeah. matching lines creating really good symmetry. And I know, well, I shouldn't say I know for a fact, but very rarely do I meet advanced bodybuilders that pick up on these lines, let alone lay people, that they know something looks good versus it looks not as good, but they don't realize the reason is matching all these lines up. Symmetry, yeah. And that's why I love <laughs> uh, the iPhone, how it has the ruler uh, option on the, uh, 
on the images. It's like when you edit it, it's like if you, I mean, I don't know when this will come out, but I'm on my story today. I have a guy in a side quarter turn and I have a straight, straight red line going from ear to lateral malleolus, um, straight line from delt to delt, straight line from elbow to elbow, straight line from wrist to wrist. Um, and that's what I use to tell people, like, like you're looking for what is it, four straight lines. When you have four straight lines, you know your you know your pose is perfect. It's, what's funny is when the first time you did that, it, to a normal person, it looks like an antenna, but to me, it yeah. looks like a reticle on a rifle. Uh, <laughs> like you lined up the shot just right to see, yeah. and like you've got like a perfect pose. Or if anything's off on that those lines, then you see it immediately. And I was like, I don't know anybody who's done that before, who's done like the sniper school of posing, and it's like. It just makes shit. It's like revolutionary. I'm and excited. To, I'm excited to draw some lines on here. I wish I had like a little touch screen. That'd be pretty cool. Um, we'll have to work on that. You yeah, know, next time it, you'll host it and you can draw on it. And I'll just draw on it. The uh, dumb have... co-host who asks stupid questions. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. That's a good I'll idea. I'll be the I'm Todd gonna... Harris instead of the Todd Lee and just t- talk inanely throughout the whole fucking thing. Oh right. man, that's funny. Okay, so abdomen. Um, things are different here. Abdomen is, I mean, purely personal preference, quite frankly. Um, I haven't found that one thing, you know, makes someone look better than the other. It's purely based off of body type in my position. So Nick, I can't tell if he's trying to vacuum or if he's just has the elongated, uh, like torso, which is the most traditional. He did change this from the Olympia Olympia. He was crunching down and I didn't think it looked great. Samson is obviously vacuuming here. Right, right. Um, it's a convex abdomen. Yeah. I mean, concave, Andrew, a concave abdomen versus a convex abdomen, right? And, and then Andrew is doing what I like to do. I like to do the crunch down kind of like tilt to get a little bit of a cer- like serratus shot on that right side. Um, That's like the classic style of a front double. Yeah, it is. Where You're supposed to cover up for asymmetry, whereas he hits where normally you draw a line straight up and down the middle here and if the right side doesn't look exactly like the left side it looks wrong like yeah Nick looks almost perfectly symmetrical if it wasn't for that number on samson it looks like his right elbow is higher than his left elbow and his r- left quad is bigger than his right quad so it throws it off whereas andrew you'd never know he's got asymmetry because he did an asymmetrical pose which actually yeah. looks better the way he's able to line these lines up i would agree yeah, I really, the more I look at this, at Andrew's pose, I do like it a lot. But, you know, you got to think, like, the front double is the most exposing pose. Like, you can't hide anything ever. Uh, I mean, Andrew's trying his best to hide some sort of deficiency, or maybe he isn't. Like, maybe he just likes that pose, you know? Uh, <laughs> no, but, I don't know, man. But, I, I think that every time someone throws an off-center pose, they're covering something up. It's like, let me put it this way. Someone's got a password on their phone. They don't have a password on their phone because they have nothing to hide. You know, I am interested by that. I'm not a, pa- I don't have a password on my phone. Some I don't people, a I lot never of, had a password on my phone. A lot of people at, at, at school, they all are, every time they look at their phones, they're always typing in their codes or doing like the face ID thing. And I'm like, that just seems like too much effort. Like I want to look at my phone really fast and put it away. Okay, sorry. Anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> moving up from the abs, um, yeah. now I look to lats. Um, the cue for the lats is I just say like push your elbows to the sides of the rooms, and these guys are all doing a very good job of that. Yeah. The one thing I am excited about to talk about though is the arms. Okay, because um, you have three guys here who all have very different shaped biceps. Nick's are, looks like they're about to explode. Um, they're obviously the best biceps probably in the IFBB. Um, then you have Samson, who's very thick, not very, they're not very peaky, but they're, they're, they're just thick biceps. And then you have Andrew, who quite frankly, like they almost look a little stringy in my opinion. Um, but I don't really care about the what the bicep looks like. I care about what the pose looks like. And what I'm what I like a rule of thumb in, in my opinion is that 
the muscle that is being highlighted, the front double biceps, it's in the name. Mm-hmm. That is the star of the show. And the star of the show should always be at the highest point. Right. And so what I am constantly telling people is that degree of shoulder abduction is very much uh, like dependent on how high you need to pull the you need to pull your shoulder up so that the bicep can be higher than the delt i probably didn't articulate that well but it means we we decide where your shoulder is going to be when the bicep comes over the top of the deltoid right and so so nick Nick has a great example of how yeah if you were to draw a straight line from delt to his neck basically the deltoid would be under it right it bisects it through the middle of the bicep half the bicep is over yeah. the belt line. In fact, right. it almost looks like he's got his elbows up too high because he's losing width to get more peak than he needs. And that's exactly what I was about to say is he can be one of those guys that can have his arms at 90 degrees. He doesn't need to be at 110 because his biceps are so big. He can do exactly what you said. He can lower his arms down, not that's sacrifice that's- the width in the lats. So like and this, this- this arm is much the angle of this humerus is abducted greater than the angle of this humerus by what looks yeah. like to be about 10 degrees and you can measure it by seeing that if i was to draw a line from the lat the delt out i'm barely going to scrape off the top of that bicep but the bicep's yeah. over that line whereas over here i'm losing half the bicep half the biceps over this line that's why this arm looks shorter than this arm is because it's not as far apart almost like the scapula is retracted as well as rotated yeah yeah you're absolutely right um so yeah he could he could definitely bring his arms down and because when you bring your arms up like you said you're sacrificing with through the lats now look at samson um is his is his bicep a little bit underneath his deltoid yeah on this but, side, but not on that side. side yeah but it's it's damn close and i would say this is this is a really good really good position for him to begin. Yeah. He could raise that, that left arm up just a tad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it comes to Andrew, Andrew, I feel like if Andrew and Nick switched sh- uh, degrees of shoulder abduction, I think that would make both of their poses better. Right. And Andrew, Andrew needs to bring his shoulders up because he's making his biceps look super flat by keeping, by keeping that degree so low. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. The other thing about the bicep that we need to talk about is wrist supination. Right. We've got all six wrists are more pronated than they should be. Yeah. And so the action of the bicep is wrist and forearm supination. A lot of people don't know that. Um, that's its primary action is to get you so like this holdable in the soup. Right. And and how what that looks like in a front double bicep is. Fully supinate the wrist in the hand, close the fist, and then you point your fingers to your ears. And when you do that, you can get a better contraction out of that bicep because you've, you're able to shorten the muscle fibers more because you're actually posing the action of that muscle instead of just like trying to flex your arm and like make your arm like stiff or hard or contracted, whatever, fill in the blank. Uh, I think Samson has is the most egregious on that, um, on his right arm. Like you can see basically all of his fingers. Nick's probably doing the best job of trying to get those fingers to his ears. Um, but yeah, and, and then, you know, there's some people who just can't do it. Like there's some people who just lack the ability to do that and they have to sacrifice the size of their bicep. If you want to see a person who does it, probably the person who is the most um guilty of this and i don't i don't know this person but i know they're a great bodybuilder uh is justin rodriguez when he poses his front double he literally has his fists like this at the camera now his arms are huge so it obviously doesn't make a difference oh i mean for being a huge bodybuilder it wouldn't make a difference on stage um but yeah he's just a person that that uh is pretty guilty of that. So as but, a physical a doctor of physical therapy or a, a almost doctor of physical therapy, yeah. what can these men do to improve 
this pose, both with humerus, external rotation, and with supination of the palm? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, and the first thing you have to look at is, is it a mobility issue? So is there joints involved that aren't moving appropriately? Did, have you, did you have a surgery and you have a metal plate in your wrist? The amount of people who told me they have a metal plate in their wrist is quite shocking because don't understand why you would need that or what injury you would have that would require that. But a lot of people have that for some reason. Um, so that would be a mobility restriction something that would have to be fixed with like a mobilization, actually moving joints around. Um, a physical therapist, chiropractor, you know, they can do that for you. Uh, and if that's not the case, then it's probably a motor control issue. And what is motor control? Motor control is simply the ability to just turn on muscles and turn off other ones uh, on command. And so if people are lacking that motor control of either wrist supination or shoulder external rotation, we have to figure out what the problem is. And it's usually an over-reliance of some muscles, usually on the front part of the body and an under use of the muscles on the back side of the body. And so they're just constantly in this state of shoulder internal rotation or you know elbow or like wrist pronation. And they're just not able to access those ranges just because they haven't been in them in a long time. Yeah, be, 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 be super fat in an off season for multiple years and then try to hit a side tricep. That's <laughs> one thing that I think is funny is when someone wants you to pose in the off season, I'm like, yeah, they're not big enough. If they were and big we, enough, yeah. they'd know that they're not doing the side tricep in the off season. They're not yeah. able to get their arms externally rotated in the off season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's basically one full pose, and that's what I go through every single time. Does it take as long as we took to tonight to do one pose? No, uh, but after a contest, like yeah, it's absolutely valuable to go back through and really pick apart pictures like this. So uh, thank you for doing this. I'm I'm, I'm excited. Really do you want to do, do, you want to do more of these? Last. After I do okay. next season, we're going to pick me apart after Chicago. And then yeah. we're going to try to be better for Tampa, then pick me apart after Tampa. And hopefully it'll be me and John on stage in the same call out. And yeah, then one and two. In Texas. Yeah, one and two. <laughs> and <laughs> it's the middle. It's so funny because I'm watching him, his transition from off season to contest prep. And it's yeah. like almost to the, to the number. The only thing that's different is he's way bigger than me and way heavier than me. But the food was the same. <laughs> The cycle was the same. All that, sh the millimeters on the calipers are the same. Yeah. So I feel like I did something right the past two years if I'm able to be doing things pretty similar with the John. Yeah, he's definitely very skilled. <laughs> do, uh, do you want to move on to the next pose? Yeah, let's see. I think right. we, can do, we can do a I few think, more. Yeah, I think the only other thing I also noticed was that um, – his forearms way smaller than the other guys' forearms. And so I would try to close this angle to cover yeah. that because it would peak his bicep more and it would cover up because the further something is away from the body, the smaller it's going to look is what I've thought. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I didn't catch that. 23 Arnold Classic in HD. Right, here we go. Courtesy of Gilco Productions. It's Sam, last spread. Nick Walker and Andrew. Oh, Jones. good. This is a good one. Pose and breakdown. Who wins each one? Uh, who I had winning? And did Samson Dowda deserve victory at the 2023 Arnold Classic? We were all that. Okay. So, so let's do this side chest. And then uh, we have to go back to Andrew's lat spread because that. I, I don't think that was their light lat spread. I think they called side chest. And, and he did Nick that? did the right pose. And the two of them did the wrong pose. So they realized they were supposed to do a side chest. Okay, but, you, but it was a someone posted it and was just like, was just like Andrew has uh, nerve damage in his lat, and I can I can debunk that. Uh, I think I that. figured that out on my other podcast, and I think his hand slid off of his. Yeah, lat, he's, he's just that, he didn't have the ability to press on it, so he lost that lat. Yeah, he he was he lost the interpretation of the shoulder, and then it just whatever. Yeah, the, people, I, the fans don't realize that when you're covered in oil. You can't do the side, your front lat spread the same as you can during practice because you don't have the same amount of friction. You yeah. have to pre-prepare for that by using your thumb and hooking it on the 12th rib and not letting go of that. Otherwise, your hand's going to slide right off your abdomen. Yeah, true. Right. Okay, side chest. 
All right. Uh, probably the most technical of all of the poses. We won't be able to see part of Nick's, but there's three things going on here in the lower body. That is calf activation, hamstring deactivation, and glute activation. Those three things all have to happen. Talk about motor control. That's what we're, that's motor control. Being able to have a chain of muscles and turn the middle one off. That is, <laughs> that is motor control. That is a skill. It's so, hard as fuck. And what's funny is nobody I've ever seen in person has a better, la uh, a better ham drop than Jordan Janowitz. That that yeah, dude great. and John Jewett has really good ham drop too, but they're like, their ham drops are incredible. Yeah. Probably my favorite is uh, Janowitz is, is good. I also like J Janowitz back double too, but um, uh. Ahmad Ashkenani. Okay. He's got an incredible hamstring drop, or at least the 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 magic mirror that they have in uh Kuwait makes it seem so. But anyway, um, so all of this motor control has to be going on. Um all these guys are super skilled. They're obviously all doing it. Um that hardest part is that is that glute contraction though. Um and man, a lot of people struggle with it, but it's not a very difficult thing to do. It's just, it's almost like a, the cue I give people for glute contraction, because a lot of people think it has to do with like pelvic positioning. And it really doesn't because you're not actually contracting the glute. You're actually contracting your pelvic floor and it's just like bringing everything up. And so the cue I give people is I want you to pretend you're about to get into a cold pool. And you like, this is vulgar, like you suck your nuts up into your stomach. And when you suck your nuts up into your stomach, the pelvic floor contracts and you're able to like get that little line in your glute. And so that's what's going on here. All these guys have it. Um, abdomen. That's the next thing I'm looking at. Um, well, these aren't really in order, but I'm just going floor up. But abdomen, um, again, personal preference. It looks like, uh, can't really tell what Nick is doing. I don't know if he's crunching down or vacuuming. He might he's be vacuuming. That. Yeah, I think he wouldn't he's... show his rib if it yeah. wasn't supposed to be a vacuum. Yeah, so he's vacuuming. Uh, Samson's crunching down. Looks like Andrew's crunching down too. So those are two different ways to do it. The cool thing with the vacuum. I don't know if Nick's totally taking advantage of it right now, but when you do a vacuum, what you're doing is you're displacing air in the thoracic cavity and you can displace air superiorly and be able to actually like raise your shelf of your chest by just vacuuming up. Um, like and so I think yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Um, I don't think Nick is actually quite taking advantage of that here. He might not all the way be, be in the pose, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, I think his Nick's arm is positioned height-wise appropriately. I think width-wise, if you take a look over at Samson, you can see how much more of Samson's torso and even lat, for that matter, it would be his right lat, are being exposed because he's actually pulling his arm, like shoulder extension is mm -hmm. a, to a greater degree um, than Nick's. Nick's is like straight up and down and he's kind of like shrinking his silhouette here. He's rotated appropriately, but he has so much more muscle on his back that could come through here if he just pulled his arm back a little bit more. Unless his pec minor is gluing that scapula down. Also true. Or I guess that's what it looks like to me is he can't get that scapula back enough to open up that right pack. Plus I can see some fibers. So he's contracting his right pack. So he's putting counter tension on it. Yeah. Trying to get the cut through it. Whereas in uh, Samson's case, he's got the striations in the left pack, but it's not the right pack because he's firing his left pack to pull his left shoulder across his body, but he's relaxed his right pack. So his, rhomboids back. and middle trap can pull the scapula on the right side pulling a shoulder out of the way to expose more of his obliques and his lat because there's no gap between this forearm and where the lat is but you can tell that the lat's probably just about to peek out whereas in nick's case his elbow is practically covering up his lat 
Yeah, and exactly. Andrew, we've got a gap right there where he's got that way too wide. He would have to do a vacuum and stuck his chest up to make his rib cage expand to fill that window, but he's not yeah. doing it. I would also say that the the backside pec, or like the pec that's furthest away from the uh, the judges mm -hmm. for Samson and Nick, that would be their left pec. I honestly think that like delt pec, like little watershed area or like where they all merge, that is probably the most appealing part of the pose. Like I think that's kind of something that the judges are looking at is like how much graininess and density is up there on that back side. Mm -hmm. And so that's why relaxing the pec on the front side is okay. I mean, Samson obviously won. And he's not, he's, he's, he's literally not contracting one entire body part, you know, whereas Nick is hitting it and it's not making the pose any better for him. Well, so it also goes to show that like there's strategy to this and also posing really hard doesn't always mean that you're posing really well. It seems also that Nick is, doesn't look like he's firing his right lat to push out his humerus towards the audience but it looks like both andrew and samson are firing their lat to push their arm out yeah good point yeah and, and then andrew i think uh andrew needs to rotate more right he's, he's hitting the shot way too skinny uh, whereas nick and, and samson are totally broadside right like yeah, i did a seminar with martin fitzwater a couple of weeks ago and what he said and he quoted milos he said, your side chest is literally a sideways most muscular. Like it's a most muscular while you're rotating while you're turning. And it's very true. I mean, if you look at Samson, like he's doing a hands clasp most muscular and then just facing the uh, facing the judges. And that's what Andrew needs. Andrew needs to rotate more. He needs to get rid of that hole that's on the back side there uh, because it's making him look narrow. Uh, and then he's like, he's holding it. He's holding himself too high. Like he's, almost, actually, he's not sitting on it. No, he's everything is just, is too high here. He's sitting too high. He's standing too high. Uh, he just, he looks like a, a really tall guy in a really small room and he looks uncomfortable. And if you don't look, if you don't look comfortable, you won't be confident. Well, it's you don't, Nick's got a straight face. He's not grimacing in pain. Samson yeah. looks like he's in pain. And then Andrew looks like he's in agony. Yeah. I can't tell if, if Samson's either in pain or he's like confident. Interesting. Maybe, I don't know. One I'm of not good at reading faces in general, but <laughs> I always just try to smile. Like I know that from like what Texas I was like, well, I, at least I got my smile right. You know, yeah, like, that's, like any of those picks, except for my smile. Like that's the, in 15 years, I never had a better smile on stage. That was, I was happy as shit. That's a good point. You want to be the person that everyone wants to look Steve, at. So. Steve Clo recognized me. Ian recognized me. I was mm -hmm. like, Hassan wanted to take a picture with me. I was like, I feel like I'm a real pro. I was like, so fucking happy. It was that's totally, right. it was great. So, All right, what else we got? Let's see. Plus much more coming up in this video, oh, guys. He just got Nick just pulled that over. I fucked that oh, up. Did he? Yeah, that's he fixed it while after I he wasn't fully in the pose yet. Mm. Oh well. So that looks like Nick kind of fixed it. He yeah. also went off center though. You like to have a straight line across. Yeah, I, I do. He dropped that shoulder in order to do that. Yeah. It's it, it's ne it's ne negligible at this point, but yeah, I do typically like to see lat. What's, what's this shit? Fucking commercial. I don't give a fuck about you, muscle tech. Eat my food. Oh, is that out loud? <laughs> nah, you're good. What's up, desktop? Yeah, let's do a back shot. You will see if the desktop oh, body what... before we get into this. <laughs> they're just doing a bunch of bullshit. Like they're not even. Like, I love that. Pose. That's one of my best poses. That's a good shot. But even even in that, sh well, give the video a thumbs up. We'll get to that later. There you go. So this okay. one's a total shit show, except for Nick. I think. What do you think? Yeah, Nick looks good. Um, I think 
probably the biggest thing for the side tricep is hand placement. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't really tell. Well, I would, I would have everyone improve on this. I, I like the, the, the hand right on top of the hip that's closest to the judges. And for the simple reason of what we talked about earlier is that things appear bigger, the closer they are to the eye, they appear smaller, the further they are away. If you let that hand slip past your butt, like all the way up underneath, you just took the hand, you just, the hand trick, you just took the tricep like two inches further away from the judges. And you, like, you want this tricep to be in their face. So putting that arm on the hip accomplishes that letting it slide back down under your butt. You're just like, see how Nick is like kind of leaning backwards in this whole pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, he's going cool. away. From the he judges. needed to open this up to be able to touch those two hands together back there. Whereas yeah. it looks like Samson, he cannot expand through the chest enough and retract those scapula enough. So he has to crunch down to allow his arms to touch. And, and he's doing it. Andrew can do it, but he can't rotate while he's doing it. Is what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, Andrew again is hitting hitting things too skinny. I think Nick needs a little bit of rib cage uh, flexion because people forget like this is just as much of an app shot as it is a tricep shot. Well, and that's an interesting point. But to me, you can see his rectus. His rectus is the feature of the pose, not his tricep. Yeah. which is like that is a really fucking amazing six pack i'm looking at right there now is it a little convex yeah it's a little convex it could have been a little bit tighter it could be um uh, more con either straight or concave there also isn't very much lower abs to match how big these second to last labs um abs are but wait, imagine also, if, he, if he flex the trunk and hit that serrat, hit the serratus. Oh, I see. Flexed it towards us, um, the obliquely. Yeah, then we could put yeah. lines. Because oh. usually, in like this one thing I do have is I'll have lines all the way from here, all the way up when yeah. I do those side poses. Now the thing is, I also try to internally rotate my humerus to show both the whole horseshoe, not just the silhouette of the horseshoe. Yeah. So that the long head and the um, short head are showing. Absolutely. Oh, right. I'm sorry. There's no short head, long head, and lateral head. Even though you know, the lateral head's kind of misleading, because the medial head is. It, I never sure. really liked the way. Yeah. The, no, the anatomy of the tricep was named. Yeah, the triceps are a little challenging. Lateral, long, medial, not, not a great yet. A, One's a direction. The transition to where they can open it up, and then he yeah. forgets his upper body just to hit his quad. Yeah, that's that's always a funny shot. Um, some people do it differently. It looks like both those guys are spiking the toe. I'm actually a fan of like hitting the heel and just contracting the quad like through knee extension. Mm -hmm. I think that looks the best on on most people. But yeah, Samson totally dropped off his upper body. Nick doesn't look like he's going to rotate. I don't think Nick wants to hit anything. No button. That way you'd be notified of every. Well, he hit it for myself. Yeah. Xavier now we get top body going going let's get into this one so this is this is where nick starts to win as far as i'm concerned got their link in the description below. Uh, oh, i have to wait for andrew don't i Shit. come on hurry up man go follow them there you go so right off the bat it looks like andrew's bending over at the waist way too much yeah yeah someone told him they needs to lean back and that's the thing that really doesn't need to happen um you don't need to arch your back when you're doing these poses all you need to do is make sure your rib cage is lined up with your pelvis because as I always say, the pelvis is the linchpin to every single pose. If your pelvis is in the right position, 99.9% .9 chance everything else is too. Um, and so by like defying that principle and pulling your torso and everything backwards to do this weird arch thing because you think the judges are sitting so much lower than they are, just doesn't make a ton of sense. If anything, it casts a shadow, like kind of, it doesn't do it on stage, but like if you do it in your check-ins, like it, mm -hmm. it can, it, it'll, it'll cast the shadow over your lower back, which is like what a lot of judges use as like their like litmus test for conditioning, right? They're looking for Christmas trees. They're looking for, you know, those fibers to be there. Um, but everyone's legs look really good here. I think one thing that's interesting is I don't have um, 
on like I don't have on file any old pictures of Nick, but I think he's changed this up a bit because you can see mm-hmm. he has a pretty he has a pretty large gap thigh gap for a person who has unbelievably massive legs. All right, so let's and look at this here. I'm not really I sure see, why. He's I don't see a gap here. I see there's a little bit of overlap. Samson's got at least three inches of touch. Yeah, and it looks like Andrew's got an inch of touch. Yeah, the thing Nick I noticed is it looks like Nick's got huge adductors, then <laughs> shredded hamstrings. Here we've got shredded hamstrings and medium to large size adductors. Here yeah. everything's big, but nothing shredded. Even though you can see the texturing of the skin yeah. is grainy, there's just no striations and separation through those hamstrings. There's just two. There's the bicep femoris. And then there's the semitendinosus and membranosus are kind of like one muscle on him. Yeah. But here we got one, two, three, all four. Four, basically. Yeah. Plus the adductors. Plus the adductors. And then there's a separation through the adductors. There's the, this adductor and then this one. I don't know the names of the adductors, unfortunately. Then there's this adductor right here. Which Magnus. Around this one. Magnus Longus and Brevis. Okay. I'm going to have to look at an anatomy chart about those adductors. <laughs> Yeah, Magnus is probably the only one you're able to see here. But um, but yeah, and then glutes. Um, Samson does kind of the glute push back thing. I think they've talked about it on the Fuad's mm-hmm. podcast where he pushes glutes back and kind of sacrifices the, the striations. And uh, it obviously works for him. I have never posed someone who I thought that looked better on. I think the reason is because they know he's not going to be, he's never going to, ha- well, I shouldn't say never, but he has never had striated glutes. Yeah. So it's either have soft glutes and soft hamstrings or cut hamstrings and soft glutes. Yeah, sure. So they do it where they maximize the adductors. Because I think you've mentioned before with your um, reels, if you pull the glutes and the hips all the way through, the adductors don't touch anymore and you have thigh gap. But yeah. by sticking your butt out, you can really keep your adductor size. It looks yeah. like Nick's splitting the difference right here. Yeah, in, in Nick's setup, he it, the thigh gap is a little bit bigger, but it seems like he closed it down here. Um, it was something I noticed, and it's also something that Derek Lunsford does. And I'm curious to see if, I don't know how I would ever get this information, but if Nick switched this up because of... Derek's performance at the uh, Olympia. I don't know. Um, upper body, though, what I'm seeing here is, yeah, so it looks like they all have like a decent taper. Um, an easy way to improve that taper is to, um, by exhaling down, if that means anything to you, like exhaling all of that air down and out, trying to really like cinch that waist in. What I've tried to do is, if I was taught by Quentin, is even when you're doing your back shots, if you do a vacuum, it pushes on your middle back and lower back. It makes that pop better. Yes, that's air displacement. Again, posteriorly, that's not a bad idea at all. Um, If we do a lat spread, um, that's something that that I tell people to do is like to take a big chest breath and then like push all of that air into the back of your rib cage and just watch rhomboids mid traps all just start to ripple against the skin but anyway i digress um i think i think these are all good shots same thing applies with the uh with the arms like the bicep needs to be coming over the top of the deltoid that's happening in nick he could probably bring his arms down he'd get more lat he'd get more width through the lats if he did that samson looks adequate of the right arm being higher than left that seems to be a constant theme for him consistent theme for him and then andrew um he was arms were yeah he's got to bring he's got to increase shoulder abduction to get the bicep over the top because his biceps look nice and peaky from this side front double they did not look at like that at all um so yeah he just he needs to lean forward or just be like in a neutral position like look at look at nick and samson's backs how they're like straight up and down yep if, if you were looking at them like in the frontal plane like from the side mm-hmm. nick and samson would be like this and then you look at andrew and he looks like this 
He looks great. Yeah. He's bent over around L1, L2, and he's cutting his labs in half, yeah. putting wrinkles through his skin that aren't striations, all to show more chest. Yeah, it's not a great shot for him. Right. And it's you, you, if he had lifted his arms and, and externally rotated here and supinated here, he could get that peak to pop just as well without having to sacrifice the lats by bending over as much. True. And which yeah. is pretty much what we got going on with Nick, is this looks like a perfect rear double bicep. I guess, like you mentioned, if he put a little bit less bend in his knees, there'd be more adductor contact. And if he brought his elbows down a little bit, he'd be wider across and yeah. he'd have losing less lats. He'd I mean, still you, keep you saw, his chest. You saw how far down his adductors had uh, touched in his front double. There's no reason they should barely be touching him. Well, it doesn't make him competitive with these tall men to sink no. deeper. Yeah, to be even shorter. No, I don't, I don't, I don't care for it. <sighs> okay, cool. I do an amazing. And then, yeah, he thrust, he thrusted his glutes forward more, and now, now he lost a there. massive. He lost all his adductors, and he didn't get much more striation out of this. No. And unfortunately, the glutes were not as striated as they were in his check-in photos. And that's. It just goes to show that, like, just because you can feel something and you're posing it harder doesn't mean that it's a better pose for you. Last spread, Nick is – so lower body is kind of doing the same thing. Side gap. Every, everyone side is, gap. Yeah, everyone has – Huge increased, side gap. Everyone has increased their, like, how wide their feet are spread here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why. They should all just keep the same – setup from the from the rear double you literally don't even have to move your feet then the other thing that jumps out to me is got too much lower back arc so now we're losing the christmas tree and getting lines through the skin the glutes yeah, are much like harder than boys. they were yeah here he is doing very concave thing with his back and he's got his wrist turned in to narrow this make less space Andrew is not. He's got his fists on his abdomen, but he's got a lot more negative space. Yeah. So I would think he'd want to pull those elbows forward more in order to cover up that negative space. Nick's pulling his elbows way the fuck forward, minimizing this negative space. Yeah. Yeah. And I think all three of them need to bring their heads back. Bringing their heads back is going to get all an ashtray right here. Yes, right there. Like they all have in their back double. Mm -hmm. yeah the yeah. ashtray i always lose it on my front my rear lat spreads for some reason i always took my chin in yeah my cue is always like put your head on your headrest while you're driving your car i started doing that since you did that video about headrests yeah this it's is important. uncomfortable as fuck especially if you get like freaking psychogenic headaches like because you're sitting like this all day long just put your head on the headrest to probably solve all your headache problems all right um as far as upper body yeah I agree with all the negative space things. Bring your heads back. Bring the heads back. Um, John is big on don't ever like with your thumbs because um, you're going to pull the skin and create wrinkles. And back. Oh, the, the tip I gave is bad tip, huh? I don't think it's necessarily a bad tip. I just think you have to be cautious of not grabbing the skin because you will wrinkle it. I see. Okay. Yeah. You can hook it, but or like Martin. I've been with us with Martin, so that's why he can. What does to... Martin do with his thumb? He hooks his trunks. Oh, yeah, he said that in his video. Yeah, yeah. he hooks his trunks. It's, it's, he, there's not a lot of people to do it, but he does it, and it just, you know, it's, it's good for him. Well, th that brings your hands down so low. You better have low as fuck lats, otherwise, it's going to look like shit. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have? My wrist, this would be really uncomfortable for me to do this. I don't know if I'd be able to pull that off. Yeah, that's that isn't my favorite. It just looks weird. But obviously, this isn't being exported in 8K, but it is very high quality, very high definition. Whatever you want to call it, we get to see a great uh, what these three competitors look like in Samson Dowd of a winner in the middle. Second, oh shit. In order for Nick to get into it, they've already left it. What do we do? Do we do Nick first and then I roll it back to theirs or what? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we can do this. Right. Um, so Nick's back to hitting 
this front shot, which is looks exactly from the lower body, looks exactly the same as his uh, mm -hmm. as his front double. Abs are crunched down. Here's the thing, and I think this is a consistent theme for a lot of people. They're doing this with their hands. They're putting their they're they're acting like they're getting arrested by the cops. Mm -hmm. right? Put your hands on your head, right? Like that's kind of what they're doing. And we have this opportunity. Pardon me to pose the action of the lat, right? The act, one of the primary actions of the lat is shoulder internal rotation, right? Because the lat starts on the hip, it has some connections at the spine and the ribs, and then it comes in and inserts up here on the shoulder. So being able to internally rotate the shoulder, that is one of the primary actions of the lat. We have an opportunity to pose the action of the muscle in this shot, right? If we take our fists, we put them together, pinky to pinky, and we try to rotate our the backs of our hands, the dorsums of our hands together, and then place them behind our head, we now have shoulder internal rotation. We're now posing the action of the lat. What happens when we pose the action of a muscle? Well, it looks a whole lot better. So these guys, and I think Samson's going to do it too, and you'll see is like they're sacrificing width for comfort because this is comfortable. This is not comfortable at all. But they're sacrificing that however many centimeters of width so that they don't have to do that. This is comfortable. Yeah. This is not comfortable, but it makes my arms look way bigger. It'll make your arms look better. It'll make your lats pop out. Like, it's just an overall this negative picture. space. Makes my lats and my arms look bigger. And I'm able to do the vacuum when I do it. And yeah. even when I'm crunching my abs, do the vacuum, then crunch the abs, but don't let the air in with the pelvis antiverted. And it makes your waist look a lot smaller, too. Exactly. If, if he did that right here, then this space would be closed off. His arms would come, pretty much his humeruses would be straight up. And this lat to serratus line would be much more pronounced, yeah. making a bigger difference between making the lats look like they're their own zip code. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who, got, who came? Okay. There. Uh, so this is what you like you said hand his arms are in closer he's got his elbows pointed at the audience rather than pointing out yeah and it's, that's right where we see that separation the clear differentiation between serratus and lat and then with yeah, the it's even more pronounced his elbows are in pointed right where they're supposed to be it looks like he's doing the thing with with his hands but he's pushing his head down but then we've got this perfect line separating the lats from his serratus yeah yeah andrew's position probably the best is, is he is cranking on his neck a little, little odd i don't really know why he's doing that but probably because he can't get the um all the way back yeah high enough without his rib cage arcing that his you know how we're supposed to have 120 degrees here for the lat right i have no 120 degrees i got 90 degrees so he's probably like me yeah but uh, when yeah, I mean, you come higher, I have to internally rotate. Interesting point. Yeah. And that's probably, again, that's probably a mobility issue, not a motor control issue. So being like having like a hands on person to fix that for you would probably be necessary. Um, looking at the legs, though, Nick's looks exactly the same, obviously. Right. Samson's changed up to be pushing you know, having all of his weight on one, that back leg, that left leg, right. spiking the right leg. Um, same thing that basically Andrew did in the front double. And then Andrew's front is is exactly the same. Or, I'm sorry, is straight on. What's going um, on with this? Like, why does he have no sartorius differentiation from his adductor compartment? Like over here, I've got a sartorius. That's a sartorius. Yeah. That's totally different than his adductor. And he's got a vein separating the two fuckers. And yeah. then here it's just, I can kind of see where the sartorius is supposed to be. And then there's just a blending of the Magnus with that. And then here it's just like nothing. Yeah, he could be, it could be, uh, it could be a conditioning issue. I don't know. Uh, or it could be the fact that his feet are very externally rotated. Do you think maybe it's because his hips are not antiverted, but they're posterior tilted? Like they're coming his, forward. Yeah, his true. butt's under him. Look how deep down this connects. I would think if you had your hips back, this would be connecting up here, not all the way down here. Yeah, that's certainly possible. He could be squeezing his butt while he's doing this, 
and then yeah, that right. would make all this wash out. Uh, adductors would be coming forward. Yeah, because you can see Nick's headed, his butt's headed back. Yep, he's got some pelvis tilt back. back. Yeah. And we've got this taper here with Andrew. For the first time, we've got a little bit of convexity to that um, lower oblique, which makes me think that his hips are tilted forward, the pelvis. Because antiversion from the side is this. To me, yeah. that's actually tilted back. And then posterior tilt is actually this, which Take, to me, yeah. it's actually tilted forward. Yeah, so, it's the position of the sacrum. And then the here... He uses the reference point. If he was to sit his hips back more, then push Watch his heel up, his heel into the ground and bring his knee towards the curtain, I think that would make the striations come out, but it would also make that sartorius pop. But yeah. then he'd have he'd lose some of the lower abs unless he crunched over harder. And again, he can't get his fist as far back as Andrew without pulling his head down. Very true. Yeah. You notice when Andrew picked his head up, he had to release his lower abs here. He lost the chain. Because yeah. he couldn't allow that humerus to come up without picking his rib cage up. Yeah. Which means he has to tilt his pelvis under him proportionately. He can't mm -hmm. have his pelvis going one way. And his rib cage going the other. Yeah. Yeah, that's very introspective. I didn't quite catch the, the hit. So as his head goes back, his pelvis had to come forward, which flattens this out. And then he picked his head up, which even made this start to disappear because this reps had to come up to make an allowance for this humerus. Now, if he was to turn his elbow out like Nick, he'd be able to keep his head up and his pelvis tight, but yep. then he'd have the negative space that Nick has. True. <sighs> But, you know, that's just my guess. Who knows? I'm not the chiropractor. I like it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. What's next, folks? Right, see. And out of a winner in the middle. Second place, Nick Walker on the left. And then Andrew. We got this. Boom. Now that's yeah. right. That looks yeah, better. That, that looks better. That looks much better. He picked, he put his knee back he, and his heel he down. He put his knee back and he shot his hip back. Yep, and, look, and then that made back. all this come out, and that made his sartorius come out. His heel, his hips went back. He picked his yeah. toe up. I don't really like that. I like women's toes. I don't like looking at men's toes, but that's just a me thing. And then over here, we've got the separation of the abs and the lat. Serratus goes in the lat, and then this just looks so good. It looks like it's drawn on, like it's not even real. Bunch of feathers, yeah. No, that's incredible. But you look Same thing, he's, he's got his hip back. This compared to that, I think that's because his pelvis is forward, not back. His pelvis is back, and we can see that by how the rectus right, is separating right. out here. The other thing, Samson also is has his forefoot on the ground, the ball of his foot on the ground, whereas, ah. like you said, uh, Andrew has his toes up. So if you, if you were to think about this from training, Think about the quad activation you would get on a, on a single leg leg extension where your feet are, where your toes are pointed to the sky versus right. when you plantar flex and, and point them forward. Some people do that when they like, they point their toes down when they do the leg extension. I don't know what they think they're doing. Um, <laughs> I do that, but I do it first around. I do it with the toes up. And I get yeah. this area. And then when this is starting to hurt or when I can't do it anymore, I'll point my toes and lean back. And then to I'll get the this area. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's the rationale. Yeah. Um, that, that's never been something I've done, but yeah. So, but you can see he's getting, he's cross striated. Andrew is, and Samson has a massive slab of meat, but not a ton of, ton of lines there i think it's because this pelvis is forward i think Could if be. he was just you know um if he was to do this with his hips and tilt that pelvis back we would get that line here yeah and then that would probably smooth out pull the smooth make all this detailed rather than smooth but he's right. going for the crunch right now he's not focused on this yeah whereas this is all relaxed up here I think in order to really get this part of the abs to contract, this has to be forward. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's uh, you do have to be able to yeah flex the trunk enough, and that could pull that that hip forward. 
That's a good point. Nick. This yeah. too much bend. Right there. Right. By bending that much, he lost all of that sweep that was there before. Like He's got the sweep because it's going to line up with that humorous, but it doesn't like look the same as how it does on Andrew. Yeah, that's that knee straight. And this just looks incredible because the vastus lateralis is continued on by the vastus medialis and then ties Bill. into where the sartorius is. Is that the pes and serinus, the insertion point of the sartorius, or is that on yeah. the side of the knee? Yeah, it's medial pes anterine. That's where the yeah, sartorius, the ducks, sartorius, membrous tendinosis, or uh, yeah, <laughs> members, semi membrous tendinosis, and um. Priscilla's all meet together. Yeah. If, and if you remember, do too many, if you do too many adductors, you'll freaking get all flared up. Yeah, that's that's me. Is I'll wake yeah. up in the middle of the night with pain, right on the medial side of my kneecaps from yeah. too many adductors. Because I didn't realize I was getting so much adductor work from my um toes, my heels off, leg presses, and my belt squats. And then one day I just got to the adductor at the end, and I started have I got on the abductor, I started having adductor cramps. And I was like, I didn't even work my adductors yet. Why the fuck are they cramping? Yeah. So I skipped my my um my good girls and my fucking adductors were fried and I still had spasms in the middle of the night. Anyway, normally I'd wake up in the middle of the night after every leg day and have massive cramps in my adductors. I had to go to bed with a, three liters of salt water and I would just lay there with the cramps and just drink salt water while I lay in bed. Right until the cramping goes away and then i could just because the first few times i used to have to drag myself across my f bedroom to the kitchen to the um water yeah to get water but then i have to crawl up the cabinet because i can't use my legs it's like speaking of lieutenant dan right Jack, yeah for real ice cream <laughs> you guys are sweet on who actually win this contest so so he's doing sean's most muscular which i think makes him look a lot more fucking narrow but it shows his abs that's why he's doing it yeah, I don't. I don't like that uh, most muscular on him. I don't know why he keeps doing it, or who told him that it looks good. I can't stand it. But I think it came from Sean. Clarita. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I don't know why Sean looks so. He does it like that. Looks better. That the hand on hip. Yeah, yeah. it looks way better because he's wider. He doesn't he lose any abs. He didn't Largest gain shit by getting narrow. His chest looks twice as big. Yeah. Samson's doing a traditional one, but then what's this thing called here? The separation that pregnant chicks get? I forget what this is called. Diastasis recti. Yeah, that's it. I, I, I don't know why it bugs the shit out of me. I'm lucky I don't have it very much, but I have it in the exact same place he does, much less. Like that looks like a two centimeter, maybe a two and a half centimeter separation. Mine looks like Nick, where I just yeah. don't have the same tightness and this, as I do there, that but I have, have right, a, like Nick. Do you have a tattoo right there? No, my tattoo is right here, but I've oh, got okay. my separation right there. Oh, okay. No, it wasn't like I, I didn't put the tattoo there to cover up the flaw. No, uh -oh. uh, it was a serendipitous thing of putting the life symbol over the power chakra, so that now I'm immortal and immortal is like great unless not that i am but that would suck you could make a comic book about some suicidal immortal person where they keep they're just super depressed and they keep trying to kill themselves and it just never works <laughs> like uh, so morbid uh, <laughs> i don't even think of it as morbid but you got a good point i am pretty bad uh let's see Andrew. What is he doing? But Nick Walker does not crap shot is he gonna go into it already like what the fuck all right so yeah, so they're both hitting crab shots and then samson's gonna go with this classic I shot i yeah, think so nick's crab shot ball. murdered andrew's crab shot oh yeah and well nick, nick did hit that nick was crazy. Uh, when they hit the front double <coughs> sorry they hands down nick is one of those guys that can shot, pop those andrew jacked and he those, looks fantastic uh, Obviously, crabs that's from the crazy. Poses, but i think just because he had to push the conditioning for this show because so this is um xavier's synopsis let's see if we get it a front lat spread out of this because they um, skipped it before. I could get his beat, but they're absolutely well. I'm going to do a video close third as well now, as we go through it and go into that front. Now, what you were talking about earlier with the nerve damage because there's negative space here, yeah. negative space there. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, what about this? Like, he missed his hand is completely off of his 
abdomen. That's probably yeah. why he doesn't have that part of the lat firing. Yeah, he's missing the internal rotation of the shoulder. Right, which means that the scapula is no longer glued to his rib cage. It is now flared up. So Samson, can, yeah. Samson continues to have his right shoulder higher than his left. Well, plus he's also lifting his scapula rather than yeah. depressing them to make his chest higher. His shoulders are higher than his chest. Shouldn't yeah. this just be a straight line across? It should be totally straight. Look like It should look like Andrew's, except Andrew's leaning back. Andrew's right. just... Yeah, Andrew's leaning back. His hips are coming forward. Like he's just, he's having a hard time in this right. shot. His hips should be back. His chest yeah. should be projecting forward. Yeah, and he's doing the exact opposite. He should be doing a vacuum to allow for the rib cage to expand when he comes forward. Probably yeah. bring the elbows forward more so he can create more of a cut here between the anterior delt and the pec. And there should be some traps here. I don't, I don't see any traps. I don't it's because he's, he's leaning back. Ah, uh, that makes sense. If he was leaning forward, they'd show up. To see two guys in and then he pulled his elbows forward a little bit. Yeah. Sam is not bad. It's just that he just looks uncomfortable also. Both of these guys, all three of them had the mo- incredible posing routines too. Oh, I know. Like these are, this is what's so funny is these are some of the absolute best posers in the IFBB. Yeah. I mean, Nick is technically sound. Samson, Samson, it's going to be hard for him to hit a pose that looks bad just because of how aesthetic he looks. <laughs> Similar with Andrew. Now, stupid. what did you think about, you know, obviously Urs had some technical difficulties, but what did you think about Dino? Uh, to me, it looked like Dino was really bored when he was posing. Yeah, I don't think he really takes it very seriously. Um, or that's probably, that's probably not what I mean. I think Dino is really gifted, and I think um, training is is super important to him. I think cardio is super important to him. And then I think when it comes to posing, it's kind of like, eh, I'm good enough, and I don't really want to fix anything, and I also don't really want to do it because this diet's kicking my ass. Um, that's kind of how I feel about it. But – because there's a lot of people in his corner that could simply give him some very simple tips and it would make him a whole lot better. But then when you win, why would you change? Right. All right well, that's the problem. That's where Seabum's humble enough, for example, to keep learning after he keeps winning and he keeps yeah. getting better and better and better. Whereas Rami kind of does the opposite, it seems, of Seabom, where if he can get away with something, he goes even pushes the envelope even further and what can he get away with? And then, of course, he did a 180 and came in the best, possibly the best Rami of all time at this at fourth. So he's been heavily negatively reinforced for the proper behavior. Yeah. And then someone, yeah. you know, people are going to complain, oh, his quads were too big. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Those are the best quads that have ever existed. And it sucks that he's not in this lineup. I mean, it'd be great if we could critique him. To watch, yeah. No kidding. What else we got? Does Nick ever get into one? No, they never do. A, what is this? Oh, I didn't use my good account for this. Look at Nate. His true classic is tight around the Ever since the ban in 2018, I keep my good account separate from the accounts that I post with. Uh, Hamstrings are pretty damn hard when he hits it. He's got yeah, we did that one. Back a lot more of those trap. Yeah, we did them all. There's nothing. Does make him yeah, we'd have to pull up a different video for Rami or some shit. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, yeah, that was cool. Um, how do I on? How do I exit from the screen share mode? Oh, my controls have been at the top this whole time. Yeah, there should be a red button to stop screen share. I think. Yeah, stop. Oh, here we go. There all right, go. Cool. we're back, and we're back. So, thank you for your time and expertise reviewing these poses i'd be excited to do this again with uh other luminaries hopefully they don't take offense from this yeah no we got a, we got a lot of shows coming up so we could we could really make some out of this yeah no thank you very much for for having me on um i i can talk about this stuff all day long it's not even work so it's really fun well i i've got plenty of time to do this as a regular thing um Obviously, this channel is very new and I haven't been using it a lot, so it's going to take a while to build up, but I will probably, you know, I've been on 
Paul's channel quite a bit, and he could probably share this to his audience. So even though I don't have much of an audience, he's got, I think, 13,000 people that are subscribers. Yeah. So that yeah. should probably turn around. Um, why don't you send me the appropriate contact information, whether it's just your Instagram or what have you, so I can yeah. the description box so that people can get a hold of you. Yeah, absolutely do that. Um, yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, if, you do, if you do want to follow, and if you ever have questions or would like to do some one-on-one -on -one posing, yeah, you can send me a message at, uh, at eel underscore with steel. Uh, that's the company that I, the posing company that I run all this under. Um, so yeah, and thank you for having me on, Dr. Top. You've had that heel with steel. I don't think they get it. So like, so um, with a, a surgical thing, you know, like if the, t the original toxic masculine met were the surgeons and they had, what was it? it was, I heal with hot lights and cold steel. And yeah. so that this was kind of like a contraction of that whole sentence to just heal with steel. Yeah. So, and it was actually one uh, where it's Genesis, but even before I learned about that was in the mortar platoon when I was in the army, that was the, uh, that was the slogan was like heal with steel. Like you guys need some help, like no problem. Drop them, like, <laughs> 80 millimeter bombs on people. But yeah, so that was completely that was wrong. Him. I was completely wrong. About that, that, was, <laughs> that was the genesis of it. Yeah, it's kind of a, a misnomer. But but yeah, thank you again for having me on. This is, this is really exciting. I'm looking forward to doing it again. My pleasure, buddy. All right. Are you sure you want to stop recording? Yeah.